Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick, and I'm your host on the Echo Academy podcast, a podcast dedicated to uncovering helpful tools and strategies that can help make your quality of life at work better. On today's show, we talk about something I have trouble with, and that is how to have meaningful small talk. My guest today is Justin Harper. Justin has been based in Singapore since 2010 and is constantly finding new ways to be a better version of himself. He reads lots of self-help books and listens to motivational podcasts to help him become happier, healthier, wealthier, kinder, and generally a better person all round. He's an introvert turned extrovert and is always growing his network of friends and contacts through the art of small talk, then big talk. And I can personally testify to that. If you'd like to find out more about Justin and this episode, you can go to echo.academy forward slash Justin. That's E-K-H-O dot A-C-A-D-E-M-Y forward slash J-U-S-T-I-N. I'm excited to have him on the show today, so let's get straight to it. Here's my conversation with Justin Harper. All right, Justin, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. So today's topic, I think, is something that all Singaporeans kind of struggle with, and that's the and that small talk, especially in like networking such networking sessions, etc. So I thought maybe I could, you know, break break down some of the things you do really well, as I've come to realize, and really pick your brain on some of the things that we can learn and probably get better at small talk. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're right as in it's a it's an issue where, you know, people in Singapore don't do small talk. Number one, they're not very good at it. And I think number two, they don't value small talk. They don't see the value of small talking with people. Um, and obviously with the whole term small talk, you think it's small, it's not big, you know, things that are small tend to be insignificant. And I would say small talk is complete opposite. It's something that you have to learn to do. Uh, to help build those relationships, to get to know people, to connect with. So if you change the whole sort of, you know, idea of what it means, maybe in a way you change small talk. You know, we talk about marketing and rebranding. I remember cleaners used to be called cleaners and then they became, you you might know more than me, uh, what they're now called. But they're not called cleaners anymore. And shopping assistants aren't called shopping assistants. They're customer service service reps. Service (laughs) reps. And so small talk could be pre pre big talk or something but there's that you could definitely rebrand small talk so right. it doesn't have those negative connotations because it isn't a negative thing it's actually a very valuable um skill to have in a social uh, scene and also in the business landscape as well and how would you rebrand small talk to remove the negative connotations is it just building a relationship yeah, I think it's building a relationship. Um, definitely, it's um, breaking the ice with people. So it's ice break, you know, it's ice breaking moments. Uh, it's also establishing some form of uh, connectivity with people, and also trying to learn stuff about somebody else. So you know, we are obviously have differences, but we also have a lot in common. So the small talk is a chance for you to find those common areas there, uh, the common ground where you can actually start discussing more big issues. Once you've done the small talk and found out where the person works, what they do, how long they've been in the country, if they're an expat, how long they've lived in Singapore, where they went to university, all those sort of smallish stuff there, just to just to find out a little bit more about the person. So then you can home in on areas of of you know common interest. Right. I'm curious because it sounds like there are a lot of positive things about networking and small talk. Why do you think there's so many negative connotations that come with it? I think it's just because, as I think you said earlier, people launch into the big stuff, the big issues there. And it's, you know, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I want to launch straight into the big issues. But I think that doesn't always work with some people, you know, they need to be warmed up, you know, the way a comedian comes on stage and needs to be warmed up the crowd. He can't go straight into his best gags. He's got to, he's got to warm <laughs> right. them up. A sports star comes onto a pitch. They don't just kick the ball and off they go. They've got to, they've got to warm up. And I think the small talk is warming up for a proper deep and meaningful conversation. But that's not to say that small talk isn't, 
deep and meaningful, it's it's sort of like, you know, the starter before the main course. You could have the main course, but you'd much rather have the starter, and that's just as tasty. And I think small talk is a nice prerequisite for for that as well. So it's definitely not it's definitely not a negative. It's a stepping stone to move on to other things. Do you think it's essential to build rapport or do you think you can skip it? Yeah, I think it's in I think in Singapore where we're becoming far more multicultural and far more globalized. It's something that's very much done in the West, in America, in the UK, Australia, you know, Western markets there. The small talk, getting to know people and just, you know, a bit of humor politeness manners and in Singapore where it wants to become more global has got away I think up to now with just you know we don't need you know with our EQ we know in this country is, is quite is quite low we do sort of you know <laughs> have a few issues when it comes to you know how we talk to talk to each other right. you know when it comes to giving and community-based charity stuff it's definitely definitely on a on a learning curve but you know getting better all the time and I think yeah it can't afford now to not have small talk as you know something that is a business you know is a business need i think now when you're working with foreign companies and you're working with americans and you know other other western companies i think they'll always say you know things like oh you know i met some people from singapore some asians and they're very direct these right, people you know right. and they really just launch into it <laughs> and so it's a key cultural difference between the two and i don't think it's a huge sort of you know leap to actually try and bridge that gap and say, look, if we worked on our small talk, we wouldn't be seen as so, you know so different to to you know Western businessmen. So I think small talk is definitely a way of showing that you know look we're a very global co- country now, and we've got a lot of you know Western values uh, and skills that we've we've learned from having so many foreigners and expats in the cu- in the country for you know decades now. Right. Yeah, I think it's for the better, and and it's interesting because in the brief time that I've known you. I've known you to be someone who's been able to strike up a conversation with anyone. And I think that's something I've really admired about you and I've always wanted to learn. So I suppose in terms of of you being able to just break out in conversation with just about anyone, was this something you've always had in you or was this something that I, I guess you've learned along the way? Well, thanks for the compliment uh, to start to start with. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I am. I'm, I'm a good network, and I do enjoy talking to people. But no, I was I was very introverted, and I found it awkward talking to new people. I think we all do when we first start out in life, you know, in school, and and we just have to sort of dig in and say, look. If I want to make friends, if I want to, you know, do well at school um, and meet people, I'm going to have to be a bit more, you know, courageous and talk to people. So it wasn't something that came naturally. And then, you know, you you, you might do it in school and you might learn to go up to, to kids who are quite cool and learn to talk to them and, and find out, what, you know, where, where they're from or what class they're in. And then you have to move to college or university and you have to start all over again. And you're meeting a whole new group of people, much bigger pool of people, and you have to do the same things again. So it's a chance for you to use those earlier skills and refine them a bit and meet people from, you know, very much different walks of life, different countries for the first time when you go to university. And then when you do your, you know, you start your first job, you have to do it all over again. You know, you have to go in and meet people as well that you don't know, people far more senior than you. And you still have to be able to, you know, talk, talk to them and, uh, and, and get to know them as well and build those build those relationships so there's always a challenge and for me as well you know when I've sort of moved from job to job I've had to get to know new people but you build on the skills you have you learn new skills along the way and you just have to I think trust in yourself to say look I'm not a weirdo I'm not crazy you know I'm I'm an okay person I'm I'm quite friendly but I am a little shy so I will need to just you know pick up the courage and do it but you know that the person you're talking to is in a similar situation probably as well you know they're probably also a bit nervous and not sure you know whether they should talk to you so in one of you really has to make the move <laughs> right. um, but otherwise you're just going to be two complete strangers who could have lots in common and could be the best of friends you just don't know it yet so i think the positives far outweigh the negatives you know of the of the slight embarrassment and you know clammy hand situation of going up to, to small talk with someone right and would so I would say, or would you say rather, confidence is really step one of, of really mastering the art of you know getting to know someone and, or or is it just simply you know having a a set of lines prepared, just so that it'll make it easier for you. 
I mean, both if you're if you're a naturally confident person, then then it, it shouldn't be a problem. But I would say I was a naturally confident person. But there's also situations, social and business, where I feel nervous going up to people and wondering, you know, do they want to talk to me? Do I know enough, you know, uh, about them, or or will we find something in common there? So yeah, I think even a confident person can still struggle at times. So yeah, the second point that you mentioned about you know, sort of visualization or trying to plan ahead is that is absolute works fine as well. I mean, so you know, you're going to go to an award ceremony, you know, you're going to a, a networking event or a conference, and you're going to meet people. So you prepare by you obviously put on a nice suit, you've got your name badge, you've got your name cards to give out. Why don't you think of a couple of easy ice breaking lines? So when you when you're on the spot, you, you, you know what to say. I'm not saying, you know, it's like an exam where you need to write them down on the back of your hand, but right. <laughs> you could still memorize a couple of lines in front of the mirror. I mean, for me, because I guess coming from, from the UK, you know, we've, we've got a reputation, Brits, of, you know, having a good sense of humor being, you know, dark and sarcastic and ironic. Yeah. So I like to just be humorous with people. And that doesn't work for everybody, but just, you know, a joke to, you know, lighten the mood, especially if it's a formal situation. And everybody likes, you know, have a joke and a, you know, and while I'm a, a, a dad I do tend to tell dad jokes <laughs> which are pretty bad and cringeable so right. you know but people you know still I think they appreciate and they value when you make an effort and try and make them laugh even if you're not very funny <laughs> so yeah plan ahead right. uh, for the situation the scenario and you know planning is is half the, is half the battle perfect so that I, that's a brilliant segue to I guess like the first key question I will I would like to ask you so let's say, and, and I guess I can use myself as an example. Let's say I'm going, I'm new to a new environment. So I'm going to a networking event or, um, or I'm transitioning to, you know, uh, a new career line and I need to meet people in that same industry. I mean, talk me through what I should be doing or how I should be approaching this. I think, you know, getting talking about the earlier point is you, you're the one who's in charge of your own emotions you know where you're going and what you're going, going to be doing and you're going to be moving out of your comfort zone into unfamiliar territory so plan ahead know that you're going to be a bit nervous you're going to be a bit shy and then think about how you're going to deal with it you know who you're going to talk to or if they you know you could go online you could go onto linkedin or social you know social media you could find out some of the people who will be at that place you're going to go to wherever right. it is conference or you know exhibition and then look look up a couple of people and then maybe connect online you know we obviously live in a very digital world where we have so many virtual relationships with people and we never meet them then there's those relationships where you get a chance to meet people but you've been talking to them online for so long you know maybe it's a bit like dating you know you, yeah. you chat with someone online yeah. and you never want to meet them because you're afraid <laughs> that they're not going to be like the person you know right. who, who's online but you've got a chance to do research a chance to find out about that person see where they went to you know their alumni where they went to you know what, what other employers they had whether in the school or university so you can go armed with a lot of information if you're if you're nervous then i think that really you know helps you know helps you weigh way up the 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 odds of you getting, you know, stumped for words right. by knowing somebody there, looking out for that person and, and approaching them. And, and also, you know, there will be obviously other people in that room who will be novices, who will be shy. We're, we're not a world of extroverts. You right. know? That's the beauty of us. You know, there's there's men, there's women, there's old, there's, you know, young, whatever. There's introverts, there's extroverts. You will be able to see if you're introverted and, and shy, you'll probably be able to spot those people in a similar situation to you that they might be sort of, standing by the door might be fiddling with their phone you know fiddling with their tie and so why not spot out those similar people you know who also would really you know be grateful for you to to approach them you know and then they're like oh you know thank god for that that someone's come up to me right. and spoke spoke to me because i was gonna leave and you said and so and then there's two of you and then they might know someone you know also so before you know it, there's a, there's a group of you introverts who become extroverted as part of a group so i think the key thing is to say is that I think it's you're not alone, you know, as in yeah. everybody suffers at times or everybody struggles at times uh, in social and business environments to to go up to go up to people there. And especially if you're going, I mean, some of the worst things I've been in where I've been in a room where everybody knows each other and I know nobody. Oh, that's so the worst. So that, yeah, that's the that's the worst situation. It's like this little clique. Yeah. And so you just have to, you know, find like the most popular person um, who's 
you know, got a huge audience and just go up to them and stand by them and just slowly sort of merge yourself into the conversation, laugh at their jokes, and then, you know, try and see if there's a breakaway group from that group. But yeah, there's there's situations where it can be very hard and mm -hmm. there's situations where it can be much easier, where there's lots of people all coming together for the first time and don't know anyone. And that's, you know, that's a key chance for you to, you know, to get to know other, other like-minded people. Right. I want to dissect a few things from that because you spoke about quite a few key things that we can really apply to our next, you know, networking event. Um, num number one, well, I'll start with the latter, which is you go to a, a networking event and, you know, it's it's crowded, but everyone knows everyone. And I remember every time I see, like, for example, in my line of work, uh, when, I, when I organize events, I always see there's always a token person who doesn't know anyone but who's like willing to put themselves out there and i really admire their bravery but perhaps you could give us for people like that and including myself perhaps you can give us some tips about how we can really uh i would say fuse ourselves to that click of people who already know each other uh, is there like a way we can do it in a non-threatening or non uh uncomfortable way so to speak yeah, I think definitely non-threatening uh, is is good because there's times <laughs> where there's times where we can go the other way, where we are an individual in a room and we get slightly aggressive or we get a little bit too overconfident and we go and just sort of barge into a conversation because we're like. I've come all this way for this meeting or this, you know, this talk, or I've paid money for it, and I feel really awkward and and I don't want to waste my time here and I'm generally shy, but I'm going to flip the switch and become like the Jekyll and Hyde <laughs> yeah. and go, you know, and go, and I've seen people do it and they go barging in and, and just interrupt the person speaking to, you know, to, to try and make conversation. And that's where I think it, it looks really bad, but I can also sympathize, sympathize with them. So I think the softly, softly sort of approach, be, be patient. If you go into the room and you don't know anyone straight away, that's, that's not a problem. You just have to be used to the, the fact that, you know, you don't know anybody there and you're not going to know anyone for a little while, but slowly get closer to the people, you know, a group of a smaller group. If, right. it, if there's lots of little groups, try and join a small group there where, you know, that you might be able to join in the conversation, stand by, just slowly sort of creep closer to that huddle. Uh, and then you, you might be able to laugh at some of the jokes. Some of them, you might make eye contact with someone. And I think also body language, you know, so if you look, like you're, you know, willing to learn or you're a friendly sort of person, you're smiling, you're being attentive, you're making eye contact with the person speaking in that small group, surely they will look at you and they will smile back and they say, oh, we've got a new member here, you know, so a lot of it is relying on the organizers of the event. So obviously, okay. there's people who are the organizers, the PR people or the hosts, and they will know that you are, you know, new to the group, and they will maybe introduce you to someone who might be worthwhile. But then also, you can do your own sort of, uh, pseudo networking where you go up to someone who you know looks important we can yeah. we can we can see that sometimes <laughs> right. you know, who might be the most important person in the room because they've got a big audience right. and then you you know you slowly come close to him or her and then you and then if there's an opportunity when they're not talking to say to someone oh he was a really interesting guy he spoke really well you know who, who is he and someone say oh he's so and so and so you could just you know use bounce off the popularity of someone else to make friends to make friends with people so there's there's definitely different tactics but I think the key thing is it's not always easy and there's not a golden set of rules for every scenario it's really you know it's the dynamics of being in a party or in a group group gathering there's always different people and you know you and also your own personality you might feel really sort of you know a bit down that day or you might be a bit lacking in confidence and right. i've definitely been in that situation myself and you don't really want to talk to people but you've scheduled to go along to this event so you've just really got to put away all of that stuff and say look i've got to make the most of this event i know it's going to be difficult but if i if i leave this uh you know this meeting or this session and i've not met anyone how will i feel about myself and i'll probably feel a bit you know sort of disappointed a bit depressed so let's while i'm here make the most of the time by just trying to make the effort to to make conversation with people right so it's almost like we would we really have to be comfortable being uncomfortable would you would you say that's accurate yeah i think that's a very good way of putting it there you've you've got to you've got to get out of your comfort zone and be happy being out of your comfort zone and knowing you could have been at home watching TV or Netflix. Right. You wouldn't be meeting anyone. You wouldn't be networking, you know, and that's the easy option. That's really the sort of safe, safe 
option there where nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right. So if you're un- if you're ha- happy to be uncomfortable, you know that nine times out of ten, something positive will come out of it. There, you know, right. you will meet someone you've you you you've not met before. You'll build a new contact, a business partner. Well, you know, whatever the the options are, you know, sort of endless. I think in a way. So yeah, you've got to be prepared to be uncomfortable there. But that uncomfortability will only last for a, for a short period of time. And the more you do it, when you make that big step there, right. it just gets easier. It gets easier every time. And you think, oh, I went to that conference and I met that person. Yeah, I remember it was really difficult, but I was so glad I stayed and and bumped into that bumped into that person. And right. so for the next event, you've you've built you know you've built yourself up and you've got a good experience from the first ones. But if you pull away and leave, then it makes it much harder for the for the next event to then say, like, I failed at the first one. I really wasn't sure about it there. And yeah. and so it, it just makes it harder. So yeah, you've you've got to bite the bullet there, I think. And and it's funny because uh, based on your last point, I remember um, um, Terry Crews, the actor um, from White Chicks. <laughs> um, I mean, it's nothing to do with uh, meeting new people, etc. But he, he, he had this antidote for those who, you know, struggled to go to the gym or to get fit. He said the key really for him was to go to the gym even if he didn't feel like it, but he didn't force himself to actually exercise or to do anything. It was just to show up at the gym just so that he can program himself to schedule gym time regardless of whether he did anything. And I feel like there's some parallels to what you just said, you know, just showing up, being there, regardless of if anything happens, it's almost like putting yourself in that situation where you start to get comfortable and you start to tell yourself like, you know, hey, I'm here. What can I do next to make the most of my time? So I suppose the uh, the, the question that I have from that is when when it's before all this, these type of events, right? Um, is there things that we can do to practice daily so that we don't have to wait for those big occasions like networking or or those or those type of events to really shine or try to be somebody? Is there things we can do on the day to day that you know can really build up our confidence? Yeah, I think I think there are. There's small, small things we can do on a daily basis that will build up to those scenarios, so we don't go into them too cold. I mean, I'm lucky because I work, you know, like you in a co-working space where there's lots of different companies, you know, thirty or forty across across, you know, a few floors, and you're constantly bumping into new people who from you know different companies that you don't work for and i think that's a a phenomenon we're going to see more of there people coming together uh and so it's refreshing to see new faces um for me but i could appreciate if you're shy and a bit more introverted you you get a bit panicky by seeing all those all those new faces there but the good thing is that if you try and small talk and it doesn't work out because it doesn't always work out you've already got a nice flow stream of other new faces and that person might not you know, might move on and do something else there. So right. it's not like you're working for one company and you only see five people every day. And if you mess up with one person, you're going to see them every day for the next few years. The beauty of these co-working spaces is there's quite a quite a good flow of, of new people. Right. So for someone like me, it's great, you know, to to practice my small talk and, and meet <laughs> new meet meet new people. Right. I mean, if you don't work in a co-working space, you work for a big MNC or a big company, there's always new people joining. So why not be the first to say hello to them and that's simply all it all it is you know like with terry cruz you know blocking out his calendar to go to the gym is all he needed to do to get get him into that sort of mental state just by saying hello to someone is not that hard smiling and saying how are you but i think we try and build it up too much and we try and overthink the small talk and how what we're going to say to this person what if they think i'm an idiot but you tell me if someone comes up to you and they smile and say, hello, how are you? Who's ever going to reject someone like that? Who's <laughs> ever going to say, you know, why are you talking to me? They're, they're going to do exactly the same back. They're going to smile back at you. It's human nature. And they're going to say, oh, very well, thank you. And, uh, you know, and, t- and tell you how they're doing. And that's how you start start the small talk. So I think try not to overanalyze it, I think. Um, and then look for work situations because we work five days of the week. The majority of our life is spent in the workplace. Right. If you're in a co-working space, great. If you're in a company, there's still ways of doing it. And even if there aren't any new employees for a month or so, you've still got existing people that I bet that you haven't spoken to or don't really know. You know that 
you know that sort of american hollywood sort of thing bob from accounts you right. know <laughs> or, or jan or jan from legal so there's always someone that you've seen you've seen them and you know you've got a once a year party a christmas party where you might get drunk or whatever yeah. but you know the, they're also prime people that you can build a relationship with with starting off with small talk you yeah. know and it might feel weird that oh i see them every day um but you, do you really know them do you do you know do you know enough about them and especially if they've been out of the office for a week or two weeks you know they've been on vacation probably and they've yeah. come back with a suntan <laughs> so why not small yeah. talk by saying have been away right. been traveling where have you been or you look you, you look in good health there and, yeah. and then the people love to tell you about their holidays and their breaks you know but that's why we go on them to come back and <laughs> brag to other people so it's a right. great so that's a great way to do it you know and yeah. even in the work environment you know different scenarios you've got you, you know you go to the shopping mall you go to the shops you know why not talk to you know if you went to a department store and you at certain times in the cosmetics department or whatever uh the menswear you see people look, they look so bored because they've not spoken to anybody right. Right. for two or three hours you know it's in the afternoon it's got that lull and you're just walking through you know if you spoke to someone and made small talk with someone they would love the fact because it breaks up it breaks up their day right. it's human interaction it's what we need so i think there's there's every day there'll be opportunities you've got just got to look out for them you know and spot them as in look that person will never say no to me and they'd love a bit of small talk you know they probably want a small talk to me but i'm you know too much of a rush to talk to them right. so i think yeah look for those opportunities practice and and that will become i think that'll become much much uh, easier when you're in those bigger you know big ticket conferences and, and and networking events right and i think you're really right there because i can attest to that because for me personally, it, it is a bit of a struggle to small talk. I don't really particularly enjoy it. But w I always tell myself um, that, I mean, the most important thing for me is to be polite. Because, I mean, that's something that I feel is important because I, I like that reciprocation of politeness as well. So it's always me starting by saying, you know, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? But eventually, you know, it does get old, right? So you do it three times, uh, three, four times. Eventually, you're going to have to ask another question. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> after a while, it's like, is this our relationship now? <laughs> so, so I found that to be really helpful to really start small and just, you know, just do the polite greeting. And then from there, it kind of, it kind of gets me comfortable with the other person and hopefully the other person to me as well and then from there I can build a, a relationship um, the tricky part though I would say and I would love to hear your your thought on that is it's when you've already been quiet <laughs> with that person for so long <laughs> I mean isn't it kind of awkward to suddenly be <laughs> friendly and social with that person it, it is but then you're saying that our relationship is is sort of been predetermined and because we didn't talk straight away now i can't talk to you now forever and, that, and when you say it like that that sounds crazy that sounds so it stupid does. so you know why would be so you know we have you know such short lives and and so you're saying that relationship is ruined because <laughs> i never spoke to them on their first day there and now it feels weird you just yeah. have to go up to that person and say look um i know you know you could say something like you know like I know you've been busy. I'm sorry I've been really busy and I've not had a chance to say hi to you and I'm really rude there. You know, you just you can apologize it apologize for it and, and most people would have a valid reason or they'd understand you saying that there. You know, it depends on the time frame. So if it's after a month and you in, and that you haven't spoken to that person, you know, you say, like, I've been really busy this month. I had to finish off this piece of work and this project there, but let's go out for lunch and let's chat or, you know, just tell me more about yourself. Yeah. It has been a long, long time, you know, like one or two years, you know, then Obviously, the longer the time frame, the hard, the harder. <laughs> the harder it but, it, but you know, you could say, "Look, isn't it awful? You know, how long have you worked here? You know, two years. I've worked here two years, and we hardly know each other. Isn't that? And we just you make a joke of it, yeah. and you make light of it, and it's both of your problem. You know, it's both yeah. of yours. If the other person been trying to talk to you and you've just been ignoring them, <laughs> then obviously yeah. that's an issue. But if they haven't been making the effort and you haven't been making the effort, when one of the parties makes the effort, I'm sure the other person will reciprocate and right. say, "You know what? Yeah, actually, I'm just as bad as you." And and we are. We you know we we good natured people at the end of the day so i think yeah you again like over analyzing thing oh it's so you know it's been so long and, and, and it all feels so weird yeah it will be weird only for about 
<laughs> 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You say, Don't it, isn't it weird that we, we only know each other's names? We've worked each other for two years. I say, yeah, it is. You say, well, you know, let's, let's change that. Really? So it does. It takes a bit of bravery, but it's not a difficult question, you know, um, to to break the ice, re-break the ice with someone. But yeah, it, it's weird, but that should never d- dictate the rest the rest of relationship. If you miss the opportunity, it doesn't mean it's gone. It's forever. gone forever. You can always try again at further down the line. That's that's a really good point. I think I'm going to try that because I've 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 already got a f- four or five people in my mind that <laughs> <laughs> that I you know I really want to. At the very least, rekindle a little bit of, you know, a, a little bit of a relationship because oftentimes, you know, like just for some reason or the other, we just don't talk, yeah. and it, it's almost a shame because you really, you really don't know what that person can be to you. Yeah, and that's the thing it is, and so there's so many connections and so many relationships that are that are waiting to be had, and it's really down to just sometimes swallowing our pride um sometimes you know yeah getting out of that comfort zone but i think more often than not you you are happy when you've done it there you know and you feel good about yourself for, for trying and even if it doesn't work out you've made you made the effort so if, if that still doesn't improve the relationship you you made the effort and you should feel good about yourself that you were the one who tried to rebuild rebuild the bridges there mm-hmm. uh, and but i think a lot of the times when you try the other person appreciates it and they also make make the effort as well and you feel embarrassed that you left it you left it so long but you know as they say better le- better late than never that's true so um i guess we didn't really say it's a final question but i think uh, a, a question to really sum up this entire topic what what sort of questions should we think about when we when we when we want to you know create that small talk i know we talked about how just you know it's just saying hi good morning etc is a good way to do it um but what are the what sort of questions at least in your experience kind of get someone or the other party to really open up and really you know respond in a more than yes or no type answer yeah i mean i you know i read a lot and i do a lot of self-motivational stuff there and small talk i, I wouldn't say i've read too much on small talk because i've never had an issue with doing it yeah. but some people say when it comes to small talk stay away from work issues you know try and talk about big issues you know like what are your passions uh, and what are your hobbies and and i think that works for some people but that wouldn't that wouldn't necessarily work for me i think that's too big a question to go in <laughs> when yeah. you hardly know somebody there <laughs> yeah. while they might love to talk about their passions it might be art or you know biking or whatever there and I just think that's too much too soon. So I think it's got to be step-by-step small talk. So I wouldn't go in for those sorts of things, but there are definitely open-ended questions there, which would have lots of people talking about, you know, tell me your life story. You would definitely get a long conversation, but <laughs> right. the other person might not want to talk about it there. And it's yeah. all one-way one way traffic. So I think, you know, it's EQ. It's looking at the other person and seeing what state of mind they're in. And if someone looks busy, you can still talk to them. You know, they just want to have a break and you say, oh, busy day, tough day. Right. You know, and then sometimes we want a chance, you know, it's like therapy to talk and say, oh, you wouldn't believe the day I've had, you know. Uh, and then before you know it, they're, they're telling you about their day and they're getting it off their chest, you know. So I think, and, and, and if they look like really tired, you can say, oh, you're tired, you had a tough weekend or a heavy night, you know, stuff like that. So you should try and look at the body language and pick off the, the social, the cues of the other person, I think is always, is always good. You know, people we do, we live very busy lives and so people are tired, but you can still say state the obvious you look tired you know what's that you've been working late or you know you had a big night out and then they'll they'll they'll, you know and that's a way of starting the starting the conversation it's things like that that go above hi how are you because most people when you say how are you say i'm fine or i'm good even when they're not you know just polite it's just polite we say i've had a you know really bad day or whatever it's not always polite or you know it's just not the way to do things when you when you don't know that person very well you could say it to your spouse so when you but when you actually call out that person say look you look rough or you look really busy really stressed out you know then it's a chance for the person to say actually you know what i am because you've asked them that very specific question and they say yeah Yeah. i've had a really tough day you know especially on a monday we know mondays can be very busy so you say how's your monday going oh it's really tough isn't it on a monday there and then when it's a friday you say what are your plans for the you know hi friday oh i'm really pleased it's friday you know so you just work off of you know how people are feeling or how you're feeling start of the week end of the week midweek the midweek hump or you know whatever you know so i think it's yeah looking at the other person and picking off their picking off the the eq which is another 
whole new topic. Oh, e- exactly. E- yeah. e- talking about EQ, you know, okay. but we're, we know we've survived this far in the world and we must be able to see when someone's really stressed, someone's really happy, someone's really angry there right. and try and work out a question that might, you know, spark a conversation or just help that, help that person. You know, is there anything I can do? You know, have you lost something? You know, that sort of stuff there because we, we, we see the other person's behavior and we just take our cues from that. Right. I think just, just for the benefit of the listeners, I think, I think there are two things that I picked out out of picked from that from what you've said and that is number one is uh, specificity in your questions to kind of narrow the person the mind of the person that you're talking to but number two is really to have that EQ to kind of understand what's going to get them talking and to really engage with you but for like first timers do you think these are really important things to know or do you think it's really just about going there and figuring it out Sometimes I think it is about figuring it out, you know. Um, you know, the, the one of the phrases I like is is do, don't feel. So when you feel things, you don't always act. So when you feel, you feel shy, you feel nervous, you feel all sorts of things. You can always feel something. I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like going to work today. Our feelings get in the way sometimes. But when we just do and we push aside the feelings, I'm just going to talk to that person. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to say. Of course, in the, you know, the best case scenario, you've, you've, you've got a few good questions to, to break the ice and small talk there. But sometimes if, you know, you're in a situation that you weren't expecting to do the small talk or talk to someone, you've got to just be, you know, don't let the emotions get in the way. Just do, just start talking, you know, okay. and I'm pretty sure that you're not going to open your mouth and it's yeah. just going to be empty there. <laughs> yeah. You will end up saying something there and it, it might be something completely, you know, simple. It might be about coffee because you're in the queue for, for coffee there, you know, is that, wow, you know, uh, how many cups have you had today? I know I'm on my third, you know, so something will come naturally there. So it's about the overanalyzing, over, overthinking. Yes, come prepared, but don't come so prepared that something happens outside of the scenario you had planned yeah, and you, you panic because you don't know what to do do for it. So just be, you know, I think be relaxed about it there and just be ready for it. It might be slightly awkward at first, but you'll have a chance to hopefully talk again later. And, and then you might joke about it and say, oh, I was really... I can't believe how awkward I was. I was really sorry about that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just don't have any hangups about it there. Right. And I think, and people will always appreciate, it, especially if you come back, if you made a fool of yourself the first time, right. that you came back a second time. They're like, oh, this, you know, I'll give this, yeah. this person a breath. They're really making an effort, and I can feel, I can feel for them. You know, people have a lot of compassion there. Right. So I think just do, just start the conversation and just see, see, see how it leads. Don't think, don't have that conversation in your head and only in your head. And then never get it out into the open, you know, because you're afraid of how you might come across. You know, it's right. just it's just a waste. It's just a waste of a life if you constantly talking in your head and not meeting people or not making these human connections. Yeah, well, I can totally relate to that. You know, half the time I'm in my mind. But to but to um to sum up what you've said, or at least what I've got from it, and please add on if I've missed out on anything that you found particularly important. I think the things that really hit home for me is number one is really to allow yourself to be uncomfortable and to just show up in and, and, you know, let it, let it take its course. And then the second thing you, you mentioned that I thought was really important was really to just be available for any conversation. Like even if it's, even if it's in a crowd where everyone knows each other, to just be around and available for, for an opportunity for you to, to, to explain your point of view or to laugh at a joke or to get people familiar with you. Um, number three, I think, is to really just not have that situation be a big deal. Let it be an event for you to meet new people but if you don't that's okay there's always another time and if you do great you can build upon it but don't really harp on it too much because at the end of the day i mean this is just life right you get you get over it as quickly did i miss out anything that's might be more relevant to no no i think you you pretty much summed it up you know uh, perfectly there yeah generally don't force it you know, okay. if you if you try and think about it too much, then you create create problems for yourself and you panic uh, and you'll become so stiff there that you won't do anything about it. So be be relaxed about it. It's like this, you know, it's not a, a conundrum as such, but it's really be relaxed about it, but still have some game plan. 
have right. some structure to it as in a few questions you know you want to ask or people you want to meet you know as in if you're going to an event or or you know you're going to a work environment there's people you want to meet so just try and you know home in on those ho- those people because you're not going to meet everybody and you won't want to and you'll run out of conversation and you get right. bored of making small talk with 20 30 people so yeah so you have to think about who do you actually want to meet what do you want to get out of this there so yeah definitely definitely don't force it there and don't try don't try too hard it, it should come naturally and you know you learn by making mistakes you know right. i think 20 years ago 30 years ago it was all about succeed or nothing that was that was it now it's completely the other way as in you know you fail to learn and we see that with startups you know they're, right. they're encouraged to fail to make mistakes and it's the same with making you know connections and having conversations with people you will fail and there will be bad ones but you'll you'll learn from it you know uh and you know i like to use sports analogies you look at someone like david beckham who was one of the greatest free kick takers he right. wasn't just born with a great free kick <laughs> right he right. had to practice and lots of shots went wildly over the bar and went wide and into the into the stands but he got better and better and he didn't he didn't give up you know and you start off by feeling a bit awkward getting out of your comfort zone and then you think you know what maybe i should have tried this or tried that or i should have waited for this opportunity there and you, you you'll learn but you'll only learn when you start when you start doing it as you said you've got to you've got to show up you know and if you're at right. home doing nothing don't expect to get anything out of it if you're in a if you go out and you meet you meet people there's going to be lots of opportunities to to try new things to experiment and in a crowded room that might be scary but that gives you 50 different opportunities to make right. a mistake and you know one of them you'll get you'll get right that's you know? true and then that's that could lead to a great business relationship or partnership or who knows future partner right that's true. You only need one yeah. successful conversation, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's the law of average. Yeah, it's the numbers game, really. Yeah. You know, so you just got to be, you know, willing to willing to try and put put yourself out there uh, and you'll be surprised by the results. Awesome. Well, on that note, I'm also mindful of your time. I just want to thank you for, <laughs> for giving this uh, brief interview and really just allowing me to pick your brain because... Uh, uh, and, and I mean, it happened accidentally, of course, but, you know, I... I th- at the end of the day, I think I'm quite lucky because this is really one of the topics I really wanted to learn a little bit more about. So I'm really glad I had the opportunity. Yeah, no, no, thanks for having me. I mean, I when we talk about, you know, my journey, I was, uh, yeah, quite introverted, quite shy. But I think also my profession, because I'm a, a journalist, I'm a writer and an editor. And when I worked in the UK, I worked for a, a, a big newspaper, a daily newspaper, a tabloid that that used to get scoops and gossip on people and chase celebrities and really knock on people's doors and hassle people when, you know, when they're in the center of the news. Right. And so that's when you really have to get out of your comfort zone because you're doing it for, a, for, a, for your job. So if something happens, you know, I, I was a business writer, so I'd have to go and talk to people there that they're, they're working for a company. They were the chief exec and they'd lost lots of money or more often than not, they've been given a huge bonus, totally unjustified. So you'd have to go and, you know, find them and see where they live and knock on their door, you know, right. and say to them, you know, uh, can you explain why you were given a million, million pounds when the company lost 10 million pounds there, you know, so that, and they didn't want to talk to you. So you had to sort of ro- say it in the right way. You know, sadly, would have to go also when I was uh, a junior reporter to uh, victims of car crashes who died. Uh, you talk to the family. So the son would or daughter get killed in a car crash and you'd have to go to the family and talk to talk to the family and and because you wanted to you know write a piece but it was a tribute as well and let other people know and the dangers right. of, of what they did but it's a very awkward situation you you know you're in and i just happened to i don't i wouldn't say be good at it but happened to you know not struggle as much as other people there that i sort of would try and put myself in their shoes and say look you're going through a really hard time. I know I'm the last person you want to talk to, but I just think, you know, if you could say some a few words about your son or daughter as a tribute to them, that would be really good as a lasting lasting memory. Just to, you know, to see it from their side, their side. I think that's where I probably learned some very hard lessons there and very awkward lessons and times where I didn't want to talk to people. Right. But it was my job, you know, I, I was getting paid to do it and I couldn't come back to the office and say, yeah. you know, look, oh, I didn't talk to them, whatever, or I just froze up, froze up. I could have lied and said, oh, they weren't in or whatever there, but <laughs> another newspaper would have probably got hold of them and they said, I thought you said, you know, my editor would say, I thought you said they weren't in or they were unapproachable or they're out of the country, you know, yeah. so it was really pressure on me from a work point of view and also from a personal point of view is in to, to have to talk to these people there and so you know that's a very sort of you know bizarre 
sort of scenario. They're not everybody's, uh, you know, a, a reporter or a journalist, but that's right. where I learned. But there will be situations where you're public speaking or you're in a role where you know you are being groomed to become a, a manager and you're going to put yourself in in those awkward situations. So the sooner you start building up towards that, the the better. And I think I, you know, I mentioned earlier about school and I, you know, you don't realize how important your school days are, you know, um, and you, you know, we have to make small talk on our first day, you know, or we struggle for the rest of our, our school lives. And we don't That's realize, so what, we don't realize what we're doing at the time. We don't realize those are really important skills. And of course, some people won't and they'll be really shy and they'll forever be shy. But if you could, if you could start doing it and push yourself out of the comfort zone, when you're five years old, you've got less baggage, less <laughs> judgment, you know, less of a difference between you and the other person. They're not senior to you and they're not far more experienced, which is the case in the business world where you're talking to some very senior people at times and you're worried about, oh, they're just going to think I'm some young idiot there. Yeah. So at school, you're always, it's a level playing field, you know? So that's, I, I know we can't go and talk to school kids there, yeah. but it, but that is a perfect <laughs> environment to practice, practice your small, your, your small talk there where it should be it should be the easiest to do you know yeah. uh and and skills you learn at a young age stay with you you know so even if you're starting out in a first job you know and you're a trainee if you met other like-minded people you're a startup and they're all you're new to the company you know they are great environments where it's a, almost like a level level playing field so that's a great opportunity as well it's really just yeah spotting spotting those opportunities there and saying this is a great chance for me to grow grow as a person don't you know mess this up true wisdom from the man who learned from experience i guess <laughs> thank you so much justin i appreciate it thanks for having me mm -hmm.